Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the key takeaways, good and bad, uh, from the Flyers' loss to the Boston Bruins. That was very roller coastery. One of the few games, I think it's only 20 or a bit over it, on ESPN total this year. But um, for the Flyers, <clears throat> we'll start with the positive and then go to a negative. Obviously, it's better to. Uh, stick with positives first. Cam Atkinson's continued to be everything and more of what this team wanted, getting a very nice deflection on a great shot by Provorov. It's nice to see Provorov actually be able to generate on the power play, not overthink it, and just shot, uh, uh, shoot it on net, excuse me, and then have Cam Atkinson get the deflection. So Cam Atkinson staying hot and then combined, this is a combo key here in the positive. Provorov just keeping it simple on the power play. That was nice to see. Um, now, in another key, Joel Farabee continues to be that gagne player. Jimmy Basco, check it out on Nitty Gritty, wrote about how he seems to be turning into that guy, and if he continues to shoot the puck more, he's going to get the more 25, 30 goal seasons combined with solid assists and be a 60, 65, 70, 75, even some seasons he's higher than that consistent points producer and one of the better players on this team. Is he going to be the next Drew that can kind of just take the team on his back, get the 85 and more points consistently, that that might not be the case, but being a great type of guy that can consistently get 65 to 75 to 80 points, that's great to have as well, um, so I think Joel Farabee's going to continue to develop into the kind of this current NHL style, this team, Simone Gane as player, that was a very good article uh, wrote by Jamie, so that's a good positive key. Now in the double negative key, protecting the key parts of the net and not playing stupid. Uh, on the one play with the um, Sanheim and Provy line on the ice, the defensive line, they let Pasta on his first goal just get open in the slot and fire past Carter Hart. Um, then, of course, there was the power play goal on the second one. Uh, he was just wide open for that one. There wasn't much they, that they could do on that one um, in terms of uh, Carter Hart. But in terms of the Flyers, they have to pick up the guy on the back post, your goalie can only guard one person there, he's obviously thinking a forward is not going to completely cheat to the Marchand side, but they did, and then Pasta was absolutely wide open, and there's no chance for the goaltender then at that point, so you still got to guard the key component uh, spots of the ice better in that position as well, because that was the regular power play. Now, on the 5-on-3 power play, um, that was because Justin Braun took a tripping penalty, and Max Wilman took a bad hooking uh, penalty, and they were able to get the 5 on 3 power play, the Flyers battled all the way back for Nod, uh, because then they just play stupid and took two bad penalties, and th that's what lost them this game, just, just playing undisciplined, not playing well, because then they were not able to obviously uh, get anything going in the third, and uh, reclaim anything at that point, and they lost this uh, hockey game, so uh, the key, the key in this game was really playing undisciplined at the end of the second after you tied it. You gave the Bruins all the momentum back. You gave David Pasternak all the chance to get a hat trick, and he did as he got on a broken play. It was blocked at first. They get it back to Pasta, and he scores in the slot. So again, uh, you were able to defend that first at first, but still you're leaving someone open at the slot. But on 5-3, I'll excuse it, but on the 5-5, goal with the Sanheim and Provy line, excuse me, you can't have a guy open in the slot. And on the regular power play, you still have to pick the guy up on the back end better um, because, I mean, you just do. You got to pick the guy up on the back end better on the regular power play because it's a 5 on 4 where everybody cheated to the Marshan side. So that's the double negative. The positives are the two positives in this game are again, Fairby continuing his success, and then Cam Atkinson continue to be successful. And then obviously that was grouped in with Pro V, just keeping it simple on the power play. I also thought Carter Hart played fine in this game. He didn't get any help. He got a 5 on 3 power play at the end of a period. No chance to make that save. Uh, one that's blocked out, and then it gets back to Pasta in the slot. Not much of a chance to make a save on the first one when it gets to Pasta in a prone uh, scoring chance as well. And then also no chance on the one power play goal as Pasta's wide open as everybody cheated to Marshan's side. So this has been a quick about five-minute video on the key takeaways, good and bad, from this flyer game. Uh, they were giving them too much ice in key opportune spots. I thought Carter Hart played fine to throw another positive one in there. Fairby is continuing to impress, and Cam Agnes is continuing to be everything and more of what you would want. Definitely check out 
uh, Jamie Vasquez's article on Nitty Gritty about Farabee kind of being this team's version of Gagne. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. This has been the key takeaways, good and bad, from the Flyers' 3-2 to two loss to the Boston Bruins. Hopefully the Flyers can get their winning ways or at least points-grabbing ways going against the New York Rangers tomorrow evening, where I might be on with Peyton on the radio calling that game. Peace out, everybody. Please subscribe down below or up above on these use widget. Help us get to 195, the end of January goal. Go Flyers. Peace out, everyone.